Hello, Super Relaxed Fantasy Club. My name's Jed Hearn, author of the epic fantasy novel Across the Broken Stars. Today, I'll be sharing with you chapter one from this book, and to spice things up a little bit, I'm going to be sharing with you the reading I did of chapter one at the official book launch event for this, which was kindly hosted at my local library um, back in February of 2020 when we could actually have author events in person. So, what is Across the Broken Stars about? I'm glad that I asked that question. It is a space fantasy novel, as I've mentioned, about Leon, a man with a secret. Leon was once an angel, a winged warrior sworn to protect Pyre, a realm where people live on discs that float in space. He failed. Now, Leon's a broken man, trying to forget the past. He thinks he's the last angel, but then a young fugitive stumbles onto Leon's doorstep. She's an angel, too. And she has a riddle leading to a place where angels still live. Or so the stories claim. Desperate for redemption, Leon begins a perilous quest through myth and folklore. But will Leon and the fugitive find their legendary destination? Or will Leon lose his last chance for salvation? So I'm going to read to you now chapter one from Across the Broken Stars. Thanks again for having me on the channel. I hope that this can provide some entertainment and some escape as fun in these difficult times. And without further ado, enjoy. Leon hated Orion airships, but since unloading them put beers on his table, he faked a smile as he picked up the crate. Good evening, Captain, he said. Hope you're falling to see him drown, he thought. The Captain kept reading his book and reclined further in his chair. Scowling, Leon carried the crate out of the cabin, stumbling down the gangway to reach the old jetty. Wooden planks groaned underfoot, and waves slammed against the rocks, spraying him with freezing water. Above Leon, the airship's 400-foot balloon was long and cylindrical, tapering at the ends, with a cabin attached underneath. Straining at the moorings, the ship's anchor ropes twisted and creaked on either side of the jetty as Leon walked along, laboring under the heaviness of the crate. Towards the end of the jetty, he fumbled the slippery box, but kept hold, staggered off the jetty, then dumped the crate beside the 19 others he'd unloaded. His back twanged and he groaned. In his academy days, he could have hauled cargo through a swamp for hours, but now he was 43, and those days were behind him. He inhaled a lungful of salty air and rested his hands on his hips, puffing. Dozens of vessels crowded the harbour. Airships floated on the end of their anchor ropes. Fishing skiffs bobbed in the water, and Pegasus-drawn carriages rattled as they entered the harbour from a landing strip that led to the disc's edge. Out of all those vessels, of course the stupid harbour master had given Leon the biggest ship to unload. The captain strode along the jetty and walked past Leon, whistling. Like most Orions, he was a head shorter than a pair, but twice his stock. Buttons gleamed on his jacket, and he bounced as he strolled towards the harbour office. It seemed he still hadn't adjusted to hard gold disc's gravity, which was half as strong as the Orion's planet. Frick, thought Leon. Leon watched the captain disappear amongst the crowds of sailors. It wasn't enough that Beriah had bombed the hell out of Payer's discs in the invasion war, or that the airship's crates weighed more than an asteroid. No. On top of all that, Leon had to deal with arrogant captains who knew nothing about space travel, yet thought themselves too good to meet the Payan's eyes. Someone tapped Leon's shoulder. Leon de Velasco? He turned. A young woman stood before him, wrapped in a bulky, dirt-stained cloak. Her tall, slender frame marked her as a fellow pagan. Good. Leon didn't have to hide how annoyed he was at being interrupted. What? he asked. My name's Alina. I need your help. Her voice was a mixture of nervousness and excitement, but she had a confident firmness despite her youth. Leon raised an eyebrow. With disheveled, shoulder-length hair, a tangled beard, and ratty clothes that reeked of booze, he didn't get many requests for help, especially from young women. Got a ship you need unloaded? He asked. Aye. Two Varian soldiers swaggered past and bumped Alina. 
We'll catch them by tomorrow, chaps, one soldier said. Leon frowned. Most Paeans looked down when the soldiers passed, but Alina glared at the Varians as they strutted away. You were saying? He said. I need to sail to another disc. What a bloody waste of time. He turned away. Can't help. I'm just unload cargo. Wait! She grabbed him. I know who you are. That ain't so, or you wouldn't have come to me. He shrugged her off and strode towards the harbour master's office, hoping that entering an official building would intimidate Alina and make her go away. She chased him. Please, you have to help. Leon ducked under a pegasus wing. The four-legged creature neighed and shook its mane, stepping away from Leon as he passed. Alina kept following him. Told you, I ain't a sailor, said Leon. The harbour master's office was on the other side of the pack of merchants. Leon would be rid of Alina within seconds. She shoved something soft into his hand. I know who you are. Karim Swan's girl, I ain't... He looked at what she'd handed him. It was a feather. Panic surged through Leon. The feather was grey, long and broad, filling the full width of his palm. He hadn't seen anything like it in the twenty years since the war. If a Orion found it, they were both dead. Leon stuffed the feather in his pocket, dragged Alina down the alley beside the harbour master's office, then shoved her against the wall. Where'd you get that? He asked in a low voice. You have to tell me where you found it. I need your help. Her voice wavered. I know who you are, and you need to know you're not the last. Laughter swelled from inside the harbour master's office. Alina gasped. She tore herself from Leon's grip with surprising strength. Have to go, she said. Can't let him see me, but I'll find you, okay? She sprinted down the alley, vanishing into the shadows. Leon clenched his hand into a white knuckled fist and strode out of the alley, back into the harbour. This couldn't be real. He'd hidden his secret for two decades, but now... She can't know, can she? A Orion Inquisitor limped out of the harbour master's office, flanked by soldiers. The Inquisitor's left leg scraped along the cobblestones, and his foot was twisted at a painful right angle to his body. He leaned on a cane and winced at each dragging step. Leon's skin crawled. He thought his war wounds were bad, but for this man, every stride would be agonising. The Inquisitor saw Leon. Ah, you're the chap that unloaded my airship, aren't you? What's your name? Leon bowed deeply, taking the moment to steady his breath. Leon, sir. The Inquisitor bowed back. That was nice. Most Marines didn't understand pay and etiquette, and tried to shake his hand instead of offering the normal greeting. The Inquisitor gave him a handful of coins. My gratitude for a job well done. Leon blinked. No Varians had directly paid him before. Normally, the harbour master paid all the workers at the day's end. Thank you, Inquisitor. The man smiled, but the smile didn't reach his cold eyes. My dear chap, what's that in your cloak? Leon glanced down. The feather stuck out of his pocket. Leon's guts twisted. Trying to stop his hand from shaking, he grabbed it and showed the Inquisitor. Found it in the sea. The Inquisitor hobbled closer, leaning on his cane. Leon's nose twitched. The man reeked of Yorona, a foul-smelling painkiller pace. Don't be nervous, the Inquisitor said. I'm just looking. It's a rather magnificent feather, dear chap. What creature do you suppose it came from? Don't know, lied Leon. A pegasus? The Inquisitor leaned towards the feather. Ha, not even close. Sweat ran down Leon's face. Say, the Inquisitor stepped back and Leon breathed out. May I take her? 
Yes, of course, sir. The Inquisitor took the feather. He pulled out a sack that jangled with Doric's and gave it to Leon. Leon looked inside. Those coins represented more than he'd earned in a month. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. The Inquisitor examined the feather. This may be just what I need. Now, Leon, if you find another feather, or anyone who has them, there's more Dorics in my pocket for you. Come to the castle and tell them you have a message for Walker Drayton. How's that sound, dear fellow? Leon thought of Alina. Excellent, sir. Inquisitor Drayton's gaze lingered on Leon. Then he hobbled away. His cane tapped on the cobblestones, and his twisted foot scraped along the ground. The soldiers clanked after him. Another wave smashed against the shore, spraying Leon with water. He clenched his teeth. He'd been safe for twenty years, but now he saw how flimsy that safety had been. And that's the end of the first thing.